Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh everyone and my show is here with my mama Hello And with Khadija, no I'm not, Khadija's going, bye bye <laughs> <laughs> Khadija has to be in all of the videos because she is 4 months old and she does not like being put down She has to be with us all the time So today's reaction is about Jesus in Islam Okay, now we made a video before <laughs> That wasn't me. <laughs> we did a video before called Islam or Misconception. Do you remember? Yes. And I asked you some questions and one of them was Jesus is, um, but we believe in Jesus. And you said, no, that's Christianity. And I said, no, actually, we do believe in Jesus. Do you remember? Vaguely, yes. So I think that's why I thought it'd be quite interesting for you to like watch this and react to it. Okay. Now, you're not Christian. No. But you were brought up Christian. Yes. So you know about the faith and... I know you have a lot of questions and stuff about it, so I think it'll be yes. really interesting video for you to watch. Okay. Yeah. Jesus is acknowledged in both Christianity and Islam and is inseparable from the core beliefs of each religion. Yet despite so many similarities and common grounds, there are several differences that are distinct to both Islam and Christianity. Welcome back to another episode of FTD Facts. My name is Leroy Kenton and I'm exploring 10 differences of Jesus in the religions of Islam and Christianity. So let's just jump right into it. Starting at number 10. In Islamic text, you won't find Jesus ever being referred to as the son of God because it is believed that God has no children and a lot of the differences related to this is how the term son of God is actually used. So check this. The Christian view is that Jesus is only God's son in the spiritual sense not in a physical sense and that the term son of God is actually a title. One example of this that I found is like if you call someone the son of the Nile it means that that person is from Egypt. So to say that Jesus is the son of God means that Jesus is from God. Next up at number nine, one of the biggest points of debate between Muslims and Christians is whether Jesus is also God or not. Muslims are clear in the belief that Jesus is not God himself because Jesus was a human. Christians believe that God took on the form of a burning bush when revealing himself to Moses, so it's not impossible for God to take on the form of a human in order to reveal himself to humans, just in a different way though. Another difference is that in the Quran, it shares the story of how Jesus spoke in the cradle as a baby, and it goes, Then she, Mary, pointed to him, and they said, How can we talk to one who is a child in the cradle? He, Jesus, said, Verily, I am a slave of God. God, he has given me the scriptures and made me a prophet. And that's found in the Quran, Surah 19, verses 29 to 30. Now, in Christianity, there's no such story as baby Jesus talking or anything like that. But it's not expressly denied. It could happen, like it's possible that it happened in the view of Christianity. In the Bible, though, the first time Jesus is recorded to have spoken is when he's 12 years old. Muslims view the miracle of Jesus speaking as a baby as a sign that he is a special prophet from God, but it is not listed as one of the miracles of Jesus in the religion of Christianity. Okay, so moving on to number seven, let's take a look at the times that Jesus is mentioned. So Jesus, called Isa in Arabic, is one of the most mentioned people in the entire Quran. He's mentioned 25 times by the name Isa, and he's also mentioned in the third person 48 times, and also in the first person 35 times. There's other mentions of Jesus, but titles and attributes like the Son of Mary or the Word of God are used. Now over in Christianity, in the King James Version of the Bible, the name Jesus appears 937 times. However, that doesn't include other places where he's mentioned, but not directly by name. So depending on the translation, the word Jesus appears between 900 to 1300 times, and references to Jesus, like using the term Christ or Lord, appear several hundred times, and also some of these words may be translated as Jesus. So it really just depends on the type of translation of the Bible that you use. Okay, so let's take a look at the differences with the crucifixion. Muslims do not believe that Jesus was crucified. Islamic tradition explains that Jesus was actually spared from being put to death. In the Quran, Surah 4, verse 157 to 159, it says, And for their saying, indeed, we have killed the Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, the messenger of Allah, and they did not kill him. Nor did they crucify him, but another was made to resemble him to them. And indeed, those who defer over it are in doubt. They have no knowledge of it except the following of assumption. And they did not kill him for certain. So the central theme in Christianity, on the other hand, is that Jesus indeed 
did die through crucifixion. In the four gospels of the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they all go into great detail about Jesus dying on a cross. Halfway into number five, Muslims believe that Jesus was a prophet who was given a special message, the Injil or the gospel, to convey to all the people. And this message confirmed what was taught in the Torah and also foretold of the coming prophet Muhammad. Now in Christianity, Jesus also shares a gospel that is intended to be spread to the entire world. And the difference though is that in Christianity, the one who Jesus foretells is coming after him is the Holy Spirit, who is believed to also be God, not the prophet Muhammad. All right, let's talk about the miracles now. While Muslims accept that Jesus was a servant of God, as well as a teacher, they do not believe that he was actually divine. The Quran describes the miracles of Jesus, such as healing the sick and raising the dead, but it does not describe these miracles to him being divine. Instead, Jesus is said to be a sign to all mankind of God's endless mercy. Christianity, on the other hand, ascribes his miracles to him being divine, as well as an example of what people can accomplish if they have total faith in God. In the book of John 14, verses 12, it says, Very truly I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father and those are the words of Jesus according to the Bible. Now number three, Muslims do not believe in original sin. And if you don't know, original sin, by the way, is a Christian belief that is believed that the nature to sin actually stems from Adam and Eve disobeying God at the beginning. So now everyone born as a default has like this nature to disobey God. But Muslims don't actually share that view, so they don't see the need for a savior in the same way that Christians do. Christianity teaches that Jesus came in the form of a human so that he could allow all humans to take on his divine nature, which is the only hope to be saved. The book of 2 Peter 1 verses 4 says, And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. Now the Muslim view is that as long as any Anyone accepts God and professes Muhammad as his messenger and strives to submit their will to God, that's all that's needed to be saved. Okay, so number two, we have the belief in the return of Jesus in these two religions. These are also completely different. According to the popular Islamic belief, in the end times, Jesus will return and proclaim Islam to be the true religion, and all Christians will just convert. All other religions will no longer exist and Jesus will be the sole ruler of the world and the reign of Jesus will last 40 years. He will also join forces with the Mahdi who is the redeemer in Islam to defeat the Dajjal or the Antichrist. And the most common Christian belief about this though is that when Jesus returns in the end times, everyone will see him. It's going to be loud. All the angels in heaven are going to come back with him and everyone that passed away that was deemed righteous will actually resurrect at that moment and everyone that's alive deemed righteous will join those who resurrected and be caught up in the sky and everybody goes to heaven. So yeah, two completely different views right there. And finally, number one, this probably you'll hear this question asked a lot in debates between Muslims and Christians about Jesus is that did Jesus say that he was God? Well, the belief in Christianity is that he in fact did say that. Jesus says things like before Abraham was, I am, and that I and the Father are one, and that if you see me, you've seen the Father. So those are all statements that you find in the Bible. Now the Muslim belief is that these statements still do not clearly have Jesus saying that he is God. So the debate still continues. So what did you think of the video then? Well, I got a little bit confused, I will say. He, yeah. he went quite fast. <laughs> I think things are going quite fast. Yeah. And I got a little bit confused at who thought what, but help me along my merry little way and I will. So firstly, like, what are your I mean, I know you you say that you don't believe in God, but you also don't not believe in God. You're like no, kind of yeah. on the fence about it. But when it comes to Jesus, so Jesus in Christianity, Jesus is the Son of God, Jesus is also God. They have the Trinity. Do you know much about the Trinity? No. So that the Trinity is Jesus, the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost, apparently. <laughs> yeah, the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and they're, they're three, but they're one. It's very confusing. I don't really fully understand it. I don't think anyone yeah. really fully understands it. 
they're three and they're one. Okay, well I didn't know that. As far as I was concerned, there was God, there was Mary and Joseph, trundled along on a donkey. We all sung Little Donkey at did school. Did you not know that Christians think that Jesus is God? No. As far as I was concerned, I've always been brought up to believe God is God. And Jesus then we did the nativity play where they trundled along on Little Donkey and they turned up at the, the stables and they had a baby and she was a virgin and Jesus was the baby and he was the son of God and he was put inside Mary. Okay, so, so in Islam we don't believe Jesus is the son of God because we don't believe God has any, can't have a son. Okay. God is not human, we don't believe God to be human same way Christianity is kind of confusing they kind of they, they say that well, they obviously God's believe son. God is not human as well because apparently he just appeared inside Mary and I don't know how Mary got brought into the equation I don't know who she was so we believe Jesus is a mes messenger sent by God so like a normal human being mm -hmm. but given a message and the message is from God and the message was spread so okay. we believe in Jesus we believe that he's somebody um, of high status you can't be Muslim without believing in Jesus. If you say, I don't believe in Jesus, you're not Muslim because it's a solid part of our faith. Okay. But we also don't believe Jesus is God. We don't believe that God had a son because God is not human. God is outside of um, us. I mean, he's the creator, right? So he can't be the creation. If somebody made a painting, that person who made the painting is not the painting. You know what I mean? Like the creator yeah. and the creation are very different. We're the creation. We're very different to the creator. Yes. So that's what we believe. So like the Bible is written by lots of different people, whereas the Quran is just um, sent from God to Prophet Muhammad So it's only one source. Whereas like the Bible is like this person wrote this part and this person wrote this part, and that's what Christians believe. It's not. What, I'm not stating the religion. So is that's... the Quran not over time then? It was over 23 years. It was revealed in Prophet Muhammad's life, and it was all through Prophet Muhammad. There was no other person. There was no like. But I thought the Bible was over thousands of years. Yeah, because it was so many different people. Right. So like, um, it was people, before Christ and after Christ. Yeah, so it was all people talking about what they saw Christ do or stories to do with him. So it was all like, it's all like, um, I guess what would you say like third party sources. So like, instead of you, instead of God going to you and then re revealing through you in Christianity, it's God went to Jesus, Jesus revealed to everyone and then everyone kind of wrote down what they saw and heard from him or what they thought so about So it's a bit him. like Chinese whispers anyway it's because a bit like Chinese he whispers. said, you said, I saw, yeah. me and you could both see exactly the same thing outside and you could say one thing and I could say another thing. Yeah, and the Bible's also been changed over time, whereas the Quran is the exact same. There are scriptures that have been found that are in history museums from the, like, very close to the time it was revealed and they're the exact same as the scripture we have now. It has not been changed at all. Oh yeah, I know there's an Old Testament and a New Testament. Yeah. And I know the... there's BC, which is before Christ, and AD, which is after death, but I don't know what the bit is called in the middle, because I don't know if it exists or not. Yeah. But there's a really interesting part of the video that spoke about um, Adam and Eve and the sin and the original sins, like in Christianity, they believe that... Oh, they go on about that apple, and if they'd never ate the apple, there wouldn't have been the bird in the world. Yeah, so they talk about got a like, lot to answer for them too, isn't they? Um, how um, like everyone's born in sin and all this kind of stuff, and that's what say, Christians yeah. think. Yeah, that's jolly, isn't it? How can so, you be born in sin? You're an innocent, pure little baby. As I mean, so they believe babies can sin, which we don't believe babies can sin, which is really interesting because if you think of, like of a baby stealing. If a baby oh, so how many babies go around stealing and stabbing and <laughs> stabbing? I mean, she struggles to sit up, let alone anything else. But imagine you went into a shop and she like just grabbed the candy bar and you didn't even and notice. She didn't know she'd you done left it. The shop. Would you then like call the police and be like, "Oh my god, my four-month-old baby just stole a candy bar. Arrest her." Would they come and put her in handcuffs? No, because and they take can't arrest jail? someone that's that age because they're a minor and they don't know any better. That's what I mean. They don't know any better, so we believe sin is based on intention. Is that how religious people get away with? Not necessarily Muslims, because I'm not having a go at anyone. Um, yeah. in general, I know a lot of religious people that pray to be all sorts of different religions and then they do something wrong so is that okay that you go and confess it and say well i didn't mean it sorry god i didn't mean to do that that's okay if you mean it in your heart but yeah. when it comes to so the word but that's that how they over, justify doing wrong so is like, I, I didn't no mean because it. you can't do wrong knowing that you're going to repent 
So you can't say, I'm going to go and punch that person, but don't worry, I'm going to repent before you punch that person. Like, it that doesn't work. You can't know you're going to do something wrong. Do it anyway. That's completely defying the system. But if you go and punch somebody... Sorry, I'm laughing. <laughs> if you go and punch If you guys them, could see what she's doing, it's really funny. That's the baby lying on the floor. If you go and punch somebody, and then afterwards think to yourself, oh my God, that was like a horrible thing to do. I'm never going to do that ever again in my life. You have a chance to go and repent. It has to be pure. It has. You have to make that promise when you do it that you're never going to do it again sincerely. You can't be someone who's a drug addict and every time you take drugs go, I'm sorry I did it, and then the next day take drugs again. Right. Like, it doesn't work like that. You okay. have to genuinely, like, solidly mean it. And we believe that God is our Rahman, which means he's the most merciful. So, at the end of the day, I can sit and say, oh, this person has bad mental capacity therefore he stole or this person did this but we believe God is the judge and you can't know what's in someone's heart so we're taught not to go around judging people because God is the judge so it's not my place to be like you're gonna go to hell or God hates you or any of this stuff none of us have the ability to do and that mommy, you know where you're gonna go till you die exactly none of us you can hope you that go. he forgives you but he might not forgive you so we're taught not to judge even the people that say that they hate God or they hate Islam. You can't judge them because you don't know what's in someone's heart. Only God knows what's in someone's heart. So that's like the main belief. And yeah, the I guess that kind of sums up that whole like thing of, we can sit here all day and say, I think that person's sin, I think that person's sin, but only God knows who's yeah. sinning and who's not. And you could think you're going to heaven and end up going to hell. Yeah, of course, because every everything you do could be for a bad intention. Yeah. You know. Or you could think you're going to hell and end up going to heaven. Yeah, because... Or there could just be nothing out there and you end up going nowhere. Eaten by worms, as you said. Yes. Then you said to me the other day that you were worried. No, I'm frightened of dying because I might not like it. Because you're worried you're going to end up in a room... Who knows where I'm... Who knows what it is. From. You can't die and come back and tell me what it is because if you come back and tell me then you're not dead because dead is final yeah. so the only way you actually know where you're going to go is to properly die and that then means you can't come back and what i'm saying is i might not like it so it frightens me it really does frighten me and i take me out after you lot that think anyone that really thinks that when they die they're going to end up going to a better place because it properly frightens me that i may not like it and it is permanent what happens if when i get there it's like you saying to me come on we're going to go and see something at the cinema and when we get there i'll go actually i don't like this so i get up and walk out but what happens when i die if i don't like it and I know I don't like it. I could be looking down at you lot and thinking, I don't want to be you, I want to be with you lot. I could go where I'm supposed to meet up with people that my loved ones that have already died, but you take it like Granny, she died, but Granny's got a very different past to what I've had. So I was brought up in Cambridge, she was brought up in North London. So is she going to go and find her parents? which then is going to put her in a place where I'm not going to know where she is because I don't know what her childhood was like. Are her parents then going to go and find their parents? Which So am I going to end up in this weird place that all of a sudden I can't be put with everyone that I've ever known because they're going to be put with people they've ever known. So I have this fear that my hope is that death is literally just like switching the light off. And literally, I die, and someone switches the light off, and there's nothing. Absolutely nothing. I know nothing about it. I am dead. But what if there is an afterlife? And what if I don't like that afterlife? Whether it's heaven or hell, what if I don't like it? I'm stuck there. And that's what frightens me, is because I'm quite happy here. I quite like my life. And how can I meet up with my mum if my mum's met up with her mum and her mum, her mum died when I was two so I don't even know what she looks like. So if she's met up with her mum, who's met up with her mum, she could be in Australia and I go to Cambridge. <laughs> so do you believe there's a chance that there could be a heaven and hell? No, I don't know what I believe because until I get there, but I mean, I'm you a very, you've got to, to prove me. to me, you have to prove but to you me. Just you said to me there could be a heaven and hell yeah there could be but also it could be you could just be like someone switches the light off and that's it dead gone 
nothing. Yeah. So but I asked you, do you believe there could be a heaven? There now? could be, but there's no proof because you can't die and come back and tell me. People that say they saw the light, they went to the pearly gates, I don't know, they spoke to Jesus, I don't know, people say all sorts of weird things, and then I came back, haven't died. Because death is final. Dead is dead. But are you expecting that one day someone's going to prove it to you? Is that what you're no. going for? No. So what, what I'm saying for? is the reason why I'm frightened of dying is because nobody knows what is there until you've done it. But you're never going to know. Well, one day I'm going to die. I know, but before you die. And no, I know, die, and that's what late. frightens me. That's exactly what frightens me. Dying is too late. That's what I mean. That's what frightens me. So do you not think me. you should try and find the answer before you die? Can't find the answer out. Well, then that means you're just... You're just I'm going to have to take a gamble. Down. I, it's like, <laughs> if you die without trying to like make any kind of like um, chance for goodness, then you're pretty much 100% damned. But if you if you go and you take a risk in this life and you go, I'm going to risk the fact that there could be some kind of like badness in my life if I don't do good things. And you take that risk and go, I'm going to do good because I want goodness in the next life. It's way better than not taking that risk. Because if you don't take that risk, it's a hundred percent chance that you're not going to get good. Well, I don't know where you've come with that because goodness never came into it. I don't even know if I might like heaven. So what is someone's idea of paradise might not be my idea of paradise and you can't have good all the time because otherwise it won't be good. If someone said to me, what's your favourite food, yeah, and I said, I don't know, cake, if you then fed me cake for the rest of my life, yeah. believe you me, within two days I'm going to be sick of cake and cake is not going to be my favourite food. I get that, but you're comparing this world to the other world. But I don't know what the other world is, and that's what exactly. my argument is. So nothing to do with it. being good or bad, or heaven or hell, or there being nothing. I just said, I'm frightened to die in because I might not like it. See, like, in my head, the reason why it logically makes sense, heaven and hell, is because when I look at this world, I don't see coincidence. I see design. Sorry, I'll stop my tongue on the baby. She's looking at me. When I look at this yeah. world, I don't see coincidence, I see design. When I look at the mountains, when I look at you, I don't think to myself, oh, some sand blew in a desert and you just appeared. Like, I think I see design. I see, like, you've been given hands, you can grab things, you've been given a mouth, so you can eat. I see design. It's not just, oh, it just happened. I, I believe in a designer of everything. So that's the creator, that's God. So Bless if you. someone is able to create this entire universe of a being is able to create the entire universe for you and her and everything, then that being is also capable of creating a heaven and hell and that's the way I see it. If everyone, my philosophy is if everybody that dies is in an afterlife, mm -hmm. it's going to be mighty busy. And I don't particularly like busy. So here's <laughs> the thing, is like you're <laughs> taking concepts that exist in our world and putting them in a world that like we don't understand like we don't well, exactly. understand it frightens me when i and don't understand a really it. good example of this is if i said to you if you go to heaven yes there's a new color that you've never seen before in this world there's a new color in heaven blue monge that you've never seen before imagine that color yeah you imagine that color blue monge well no because i haven't seen it exactly but can you understand that there could be a new color that you've never exactly. seen exactly and i do understand there is part of me that understands that i might really like being dead and go, oh my god, why did I not do this years ago? <laughs> but do you understand what I'm saying with the colour theory? Yes. I'm, I'm telling you that you can understand with your brain there could be a new colour, but you yes. can't see it with your mind. That's heaven and hell. That's the way yes. we, that's also how we see God. People will like explain God to me. We understand, but you can't imagine it because you can't imagine a new colour, but you understand that there could be a new colour. So if God created everything, and he is a creator, then who the heck created him, or where did he come from, or how did he not be there to create everything? That's a good question, we'll answer it in the next episode. Please write in answers on postcards. Yes, I've got a good answer for it, I just think it, it's long and she's crying. Yes. Okay, cool. Thank you guys for watching, assalamualaikum, bye. Oh, you're a good girl.